the more effort that you put into all aspects of your life, the more you're going to get out of it and like the more successful kind of a person you can become. And I think that's why Polly is able to produce so many, not only successful athletes, but just like successful people in general. Hey, I'm uh, Ish Pluton. I'm the coach at Long Beach Poly, and this is Colin Gear, and we're we're here to talk about the uh, one of the most historic seasons in uh, Long Beach Poly Aquatics. Uh, kind of before we uh, dive into uh, the season, um, pun intended, <laughs> uh, I kind of want to talk about my background and kind of the program's background, and you know, talk with Colin about this historic season and what it meant to him. Uh, so personally, I was a Long Beach Poly swimmer myself. Uh, I played water polo and swam at Poly, uh, and all my kind of career, um, you know, finding out freshman year that, you know, Wilson's always had this like dominant hold on swim in the league. Um, it was always this like, all right, we got to beat Wilson. We got to beat Wilson. Um, and Colin's been fortunate enough to, uh, to have that chance. Um, and so I recently, this is my first year as head coach of swim, uh, coach, you know, water polo for seven years now. Uh, and we had this amazing season. So I don't know, Colin, if you want to say who you, who you are and, you know, what you've been part of so far with, uh, poly swim. Yeah. So, uh, my name's Colin gear. I'm a senior at Long Beach poly high school. And, um, yeah, the team this year is really special. Um, I've been on the team since a freshman, um, I've been on varsity all four years. I was the team captain last year and the team captain this year. And it's just been super, super, super special pushing towards history with the same group of guys since freshman year. We've been like a really tight knit group of kids since a freshman. I grew up with a lot of these people before high school. And so really working at one goal with like what I would consider my best friends was just a super special experience. Yeah. And so like what's, I mean, what I think is super cool about your group is you guys, uh, one, we're like super tight knit, um, but you guys were all freshmen going through uh, the pandemic. And, and so that like cut your freshman season short. Um, and this year we had 13 boys seniors and you guys stuck it out. Um, and I, I don't know if that if that made a difference, if like like having to deal with that made you guys closer or tighter. Or what do you think? Yeah, I would say so. Just because like at the beginning of this, when we started going into virtual school and stuff, um, I stayed like really close to my school friends because like you were seeing them on the Zoom classrooms. And so you found ways to talk to like the guys that you were close with. And so we, I remember we were early on doing like workouts over Zoom. And so I think seeing your teammates, like the, seeing the fact that your teammates were still working, regardless of like our circumstances, meant that I and like my friends also had to put in the work. And so we all kind of just set that environment. And I think for a lot of us, it was actually a good opportunity, right? To just go home, like our bodies were getting a lot of rest, but at the same time, like we weren't doing nothing the whole time we were still working and getting closer and like developing relationships with each other. And I think that that was a really good opportunity for us. Like given that it was a pandemic and a huge tragedy, I think that we took what we could from it. Uh, and I'm just, I'm super stoked. I got to coach you guys and I'm really stoked that you guys all stuck with it. Like it's, it's super impressive to me. I don't know if I could, uh, when I was your age. So I'm, I'm proud of you guys and that, that work that you guys put in. So what's especially special, um, is that not only did you guys stick together, but you guys did something super historic. Um, the last time a team won more league other than Wilson, uh, was Lakewood in 1972. Uh, and so that is like a huge deal in the aquatics world in Long Beach, um, but also for um, poly athletes. Was there like anything that you were kind of like thinking about like this season uh, about what it meant for poly alum or uh, anything like that while you guys were working? Yeah, um, we were for sure doing it for more than just this year's team. I mean, generations on generations went through the program and had great experiences i'm sure won a lot of games right it's like looking at poly aquatics like it's not like we're some like historic losing program mm -hmm. we just are in a league with wilson who is like extremely extremely talented and extremely special and they have all this crazy history and so we've always just kind of been like second to them and so i know that i've been doing it for alumni and a lot of alumni have been 
like wanting us to get over that hump. And so I think that was another thing that just really pushed us was like the alumni support that I and some of my friends have also told me that they have received is incredible. Like I was telling, I, I forget who I was telling this, but I was getting like texts from alumni weeks out of more league. And then after more league, when we did guys that I didn't even know did swim at poly <laughs> were finding ways to contact me. So it was so cool to see like, this group of that poly swim and poly aquatics as a community like come together for this one thing and there was just so much support and it was it was not overwhelming but it was just like incredible yeah absolutely and i i can kind of echo that same i got the same response yeah. i got the texts i got the phone yeah. calls uh i got a lot of uh is he really that fast for for you and i was like oh yeah colin's that fast um which uh, i guess it, we should probably talk about how you got started in swimming in the first uh -huh. place and, and how you ended up at Poly and, and, and why you'd like, why this uh, is kind of a really cool like stepping stone into the, the next part of your swimming career. Yeah, so like growing up, I played a lot of sports, swimming was one of them, but I was like a five sport young athlete and I just like always try to keep my options really open. And so when I did pick one sport, like I wasn't too burnt out on it and I could enjoy it for the rest of my life. And so growing up, swimming was my best sport. I was pretty good at a couple other sports, but we kind of knew that there was some talent there in swimming. And so when I was about 11 years old, I really started taking swimming seriously and like kind of dropped off the other sports. And so I started working with our former poly coach, uh, Eddie Kim, when mm -hmm. I was 10 years old. And I guess that's kind of what brought me to poly. I was always um, intrigued by poly because of the pace program and the academics. And that's something that I value in my decision. And so even like, I mean, this was like probably fifth, sixth grade. So I wasn't like really thinking about it, but I always knew in the back of my mind that poly pace was a great option and was going to be an option for me come when it was decided to go to high school. And then I think when I started working with Eddie and then it was time to get to high school that poly just kind of made sense for me, right? It had the academics, it had the athletics and Wilson, like being the historic program that it is, they are very water polo centric. And I never got into water polo, even as a kid, I always have been just a swimmer. And so I kind of thought that maybe there were some club swimmers at Poly at the time and I had seen them, seen them succeed and do a really good job balancing their club workouts with the high school workouts. And so I thought that was a schedule that could fit me and fit my goals. And so I just thought that Poly was the right choice for me. Yeah. Awesome. And I, I love that like part of your choice to come to Poly was like Poly Pace and that really screams like what we're all about at Poly, yeah, the scholars absolutely. and champions. Um, an another thought I had while you were talking was um, I know you've always been like diehard club swimmer, but like our team this year was successful with both our club swimming athletes and our water polo players kind of working together for the same goal. Uh, and I got to witness your leadership. Um, but if you want to talk about kind of what it, how you rallied all these guys together and, and what that looked like kind of on the, on the ground floor of, of working for a successful season, like through your leadership. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll just first explain the situation for those of you who, like, don't understand. So we had 13 seniors this year, like we said. Mm -hmm. I'm, like, not, like, these numbers aren't exact, but I think 11 or 10 of them are water polo players. Mm -hmm. And so water polo season's first. And so in January or February, these kids finished up water polo season of their senior year, and it was time to swim. And swimming is not their sport. They are water polo players. And so we rallied all of them back. And not only did these kids just show up, right? And they weren't just there for their leadership either, right? It's nice to have a bunch of seniors on deck leading the like younger kids and the younger water polo players and influencing them that you've got to do swim. You've got to swim fast. You score huge points for us. But these seniors also stepped up and played a huge role in scoring points for us. We had guys drop three or four seconds from last from their junior year. And it's like, I don't think every senior water polo player does that. I don't know if you can even expect that from them, but... The culture that we built, getting water polo players to be able to swim and transforming these kids, not only through conditioning, but we were very technical with water polo players, right? That's something that some of them might lack in the water due to just a lack of experience with swimming. And so to see these kids doing underwater kicks and doing like proper turns and everything was so crazy to me. And I got to be a part of it in practice, but to really see it come together at the meets and to see these water polo players, and they were so into it too, like they were calculating the points and like thinking, oh, I have to get this place and beat this person. It was really special to see how into swimming these kids got. And it was because that we had this history to work towards. 
And so it was good that we had the goal and it got a lot of people motivated. So it was a really, really special culture that we have this year. Yeah, I got to witness a whole bunch of, yeah, just like you said, a whole bunch of water polo players become like swim nerds. They're yeah. Like, All right. How many points do we need? Like, yeah. Where, where should I, like, where do we need to swim guys so that we can win this meet? And like, it, it was really fun to see um, polo kids just get so like amped about yeah. the swim season. Uh, I hope that carries on. I hope this is the legacy that kind of you and this like mm -hmm. immense group of seniors have kind of created where we're always like super like excited and ready to go for swim. Uh, what, why do you think this team was the, was the first team to break this, you know, 49 year long streak? What, what was, what was different about us? What was what was different about the situation? Like what made it what made it happen? Yeah, so I mean the first thing, and this is like the obvious, like boring answer, is this team had a ton of talent. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can go mm -hmm. on and on about the names. We were mm -hmm. an extremely talented team, probably the most talented team ever in poly history, but it goes beyond that because we had a lot of club swimmers this year, seven or eight club swimmers this year, but we had 17, 18 guys on varsity. And so 10 water polo players swam for us on varsity. And not only were they, I mean, we had water polo players swimming backstroke, mm -hmm. butterfly, breaststroke. We had a water polo player do the 200 IM. Like these are events that are for the club swimmers and the tradition, like traditionally for Polly, our thing has been that we're really strong in the strokes with our club swimmers, but Wilson dominates us in the freestyle. Mm -hmm. And this year, this team got four guys up, all seniors in the 50 freestyle, mm -hmm. all water polo players. Mm -hmm. We had a sophomore get third place in the 500 freestyle or water polo player. Mm -hmm. Like these are things that just, haven't happened before at Pauly. Mm -hmm. And so these are just special kids that worked especially hard in the sport that's not even theirs. And that's, I think, what set us apart. We've always had club swimmers that we've always won events. That's something that Pauly will continue to do for years. But hopefully now we have these water polo players that develop into these freestylers and these stroke swimmers and score big points for us in their events to be like the number two, three, and four guys. And that's what we emphasize all year is when it gets to more league, <clears throat> The fourth guy in every event is super important. Mm -hmm. And the third and fourth guy getting into the finals and beating kids from Wilson or Milliken or any of these schools, like we need to beat their third and fourth guy. We need to have the best third and fourth guys. And our guys are like really took that to heart this year. I think sometimes it's easy to think, well, we have this person or this person and they're super good so they can just carry us. And maybe it works like that in some sports, but just the way points work in swimming, that's not how it works. And so for these guys to like know how much they mattered and mm -hmm. to perform under the circumstances was so special. Yeah, and I mean, for those that like aren't part of swimming, like, and they're like, points, what do you mean points? Like, don't you just like swim fast? And so our boys used to like think that same way, like, oh, I just, I just swim fast. And now, now they're like really understanding like every single position in the meet matters and, and having those third or fourth guys really race and try to beat the third and fourth guys on the Wilson team was I, for sure a difference maker. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you think about um, kind of poly aquatics or poly athletics as a whole? Um, you know, Long Beach has this kind of like history of guys and girls looking at, you know, aquatics programs. And, and, and most people think, oh, like, you know, the, the premier program in Long Beach uh, is, you know, Wilson. And then the premier program in Long Beach for, you know, football or basketball is, is poly. Do you think? This historic season has any any like meaning and, and is it making any change to like say that like hey we're an aquatic school too um, i mean i think absolutely it can be changed it just like it's now about keeping the culture the same way it was this year obviously mm -hmm. like everything we've said this year like we had what it takes to win talent wise but also like work work ethic wise and development wise i mean we developed a freshman from kind of like nothing to a varsity swimmer for us mm -hmm. this year. And he mm -hmm. stepped up his first meet on varsity was the last meet. And <clears throat> so if Polly can do more of that, mm -hmm. I think absolutely that this could be a culture mm -hmm. that establishes itself as a good aquatics program. We clearly have the athletic department for it. We have the support for it. Mm -hmm. Swimming's gotten so much support this year from Polly being like how successful we were. And so I think that the school clearly has a big athletic history and we have right now the coaching staff and, um, like the coaching staff and the culture to get like get it done and be successful for years to come. So I think now it's just about keeping that and establishing that Polly can be successful in aquatics as well. Yeah. I and I, I think uh it's it's really fun right now um to just feel all the support from the school. Um as I've kind of like walked around campus and you've got these like 
track coaches that have won CIF council yeah. countless times uh, and the football coach. And they're, they're, they're coming up to me and we're like, that was a big win. Uh -huh. And they're pumped for us. Um, and I know you talked about, I think, to the, maybe the 562 about the fact that Mr. Shock was running around campus with a, yep, with a, with swim, a swim cap, cap on yep. his head. Uh -huh. uh, and so I, I'm thinking, you know, like, oh, this is really cool. Like the school is like rallying behind us. Like Polly, Polly's like, it's becoming like an uh -huh. aquatic school too. Uh, and that, that gets me really excited. Um, what actually is more exciting, even more exciting to me is uh, what you're doing next. Um, for those that like are just finding out about like the poly swim program, um, they, they're going to find articles about, about you, of uh -huh. course. Uh, and so Colin just swam uh, CIF Southern Section and CIF State and set IM records, 200 IM records. It's a grueling event where you swim uh, two strokes of every, or two laps of every stroke, um, and you set the record in it. And so, um, what is it, what is, what does that mean for your future? Where are you going next? What do you, what are you doing yeah, after, so, after poly? Um, next year I'm swimming over at uh, the university of Michigan. There's a lot of successful history over there. That's actually Michael Phelps didn't go there, mm -hmm. but he trained with the team there and that's where he was training when he went to his first Olympic games. So clearly like there's a lot of history over there and I just, Going into next year, I'm really excited because it's a new environment and there's a lot of fast people over there, people that are much faster than me. And so it's good. I'm going to get pushed for not the first time in my life, but it's going to be a great opportunity to go over there and get pushed by guys that are significantly faster than me. And hopefully mm. I can, I like, I know myself as one that can adapt to an environment and make myself into like the top of a new environment. And so I'm hoping that this environment, I can slowly move my way up to the top mm. and just I want to do whatever I can for the team, right? Like a lot of our guy, our lower guys did this year. Mm -hmm. They came on the team and they swam whatever it can. That's how I feel next year. I just want to score as many points as I can for the team next year, get onto the travel squad and start like traveling and getting these big experiences in college. So it's going to be good moving to the next level and getting a lot more exposure and swimming at some of these big time meets. Yeah. Well, and kind of thinking about you as you move on to this next level, your your name um, is on our swim record board, you know, numerous times, and you're you're going on to this, you know, really fast, uh, prestigious school for swimming. What do you think? Um, all your success and and helping like lead this team, uh, do you think you'll serve as kind of like a cool, uh, like role model or or uh, kind of idol for young kids that like want to swim, and want to swim at Poly? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I hope that, and for young swimmers in Long Beach when it's helping them choose a school, they see that Polly can put out a top tier swimmer because mm -hmm. Wilson's had countless yeah. crazy water polo players, crazy swim recruits, and mm -hmm. like we can do it too. And so I hope that I'm just like, if nothing more, I'm just proof that something like an elite athlete can come out of Polly. You don't have to go to X school just because you're like this young, super talented athlete. Like if you work hard enough, it doesn't really matter where you go to school. Like there's good environments all around Long Beach and you can be talented anywhere. Yeah, that's awesome. I, 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 th I think it's going to be really cool to watch like young, especially like young swimmers that like step onto the poly pool deck and they look up at the times and they go, oh my God, I don't like that's fast. Uh, and I hope they like they look you up and they, they see where you're swimming and I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited for any time you're at a meet local to like come watch you. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully I'm swimming around here a lot. Michigan's yeah. far. But yeah, Michigan's far. Fingers crossed. But I, I think you've I think you've done a really good job, especially because like you're you're a phenomenal kid and great leader that you're you're gonna inspire a lot of people uh, and a lot of young boys to hopefully like, you know, pursue like some like high level swimming. Yeah. Um I guess like one last one last thing I want to kind of think about or talk about before we kind of wrap up here is what do you think um, being a like scholar and and champion at, at Poly like means to you? Yeah, I mean, like I mentioned earlier, when like coming to Poly for pace was like mm -hmm. a big thing for me. I mean, um, like academics come first, just like scholar, like how being a scholar and champion, we say scholar first. Like the academics is everything for me, and I think that the balance has been something that. I've learned a lot about over the past four years and but right like the point is um like going off to the next level at Michigan and being a successful student athlete like you learn that school's always going to be a part of it right like I'm going from a super 
tough high school program to now what's going to be a super tough academic life in college. And so you have to learn from a young age to put that scholar first, get the work done in the classroom. And like, sometimes that's the hard part for me, that's been the harder part. And then the athletics is the fun part. And so it's like working hard in the classroom kind of like gets my day going and gets mm -hmm. me ready to work hard in the other aspects of my life. And so you kind of just learned that the more effort that you put into all aspects of your life, the more you're going to get out of it. And like the more successful kind of a person you can become. And I think that's why Polly is able to produce so many, not only successful athletes, but just like successful people in general. Yeah. Spoken like a, spoken like a true, true jack, jackrabbit, yeah. like ready to go forth and serve, right? Yeah. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm.